700 AD. Arabian nomads and Persian traders established trade with the Hausa and Kanuri people of Western Africa in ivory, rhino horn, gold, shells, and slaves. The Arab traders gradually settle and bring a Muslim influence to the local culture. 1200 AD to the 1800s, the Kanembono Empire dominates the north. The Bini Kingdom also took dominance towards the south. The Hausa Kingdoms also began to flourish. Elaborate systems of government were developed by all of these. 1400 AD, the Oyo Empire, which stretch all the way to modern-day Togo, was born. 1472 AD, Portuguese explorers sailing along the Gulf of Guinea discover the coastline of the Bight of Benin. They established trade with the Benin Kingdom, dominating the southern coastlines at the time. 1486 AD, the first set of Catholic missionaries land in the Bini Kingdom. 1589, the French, the Dutch, the Danes and the English break the monopoly of the Portuguese and begin to establish trade in the Bight of Benin. 1683, the Oba of Benin converts to Christianity upon marrying a white wife, courtesy of the missionaries that arrived from Sao Tome. He gives his official consent for missionary activity in the kingdom. 1700 to 1800 AD, the volume of trade in slaves overtake the trade in gold, ivory, and every other produce. The 1800s, Northern Nigeria comes under the loose control of an Islamic empire. 1800 to the 1900s, European slave traders establish coastal ports for the increasing slaves for the Americas. 1807, the act abolishing slave trade was passed by the parliament in the United Kingdom. At this time, a deep sense of guilt had dawned upon the British because of the cruelties of the slave trade. 1830 AD to 1840, the slave trade flourishes in spite of the abolition by the British Empire. The Americas and other parts of Europe are the new destinations of the slaves. 1807 AD, Usman Danfodio's Jihad, Sokoto Caliphate is founded. 1837, the reorganization and the pre-colonial transformation of the Sokoto Caliphate. The original caliphate would later collapse in 1903 when Sokoto and Kano were sacked as a result of the British colonial intrusions. 1834, the slaves in the British Empire were emancipated. 1841 to 1846 AD, the Methodist Church, the Church of Scotland, the American Baptist missionaries and the Church of England landed in Lagos under the banner of the Christian Missionary Society, CMS. From the golden sands of Sokoto to the rolling hills of Obudu, from the fertile savanna of Mubi to the fruitful waters of the Niger Delta, from rich forests of Sapele to the rocky heights of Jos, from the beautiful hills of Enugu to the busy commerce of Lagos, a spirit of anticipation and revelation is running through the land, north, south, east and west. The cry is the same. The time has come for Nigerians to arise. My name is Adetaju Bobalonge. Welcome to Arise Nigeria. Everything that Nehemiah needed, everything that was needed to set Nigeria back on course was already present. The only difference was Nehemiah. And the leaders of Zion built from this place to that place. The Tekoites built from this place to that place. Before Nehemiah came, and not one person lifted up his finger to build, when he heard the report about the state of crime and hopelessness, when he heard the report about inflation, 
strikes my neighbor, strikes my doctor, strikes my lecturer. When he heard the report of the indices of corruption, instead of his heart to sink in depression, his eyes received a vision. You see, purpose is not decided, it is discovered. We need leadership with a revelation of the purpose of God for this nation. If a leader receives a vision, he has received a spiritual mandate to lead with the full authority of God backing him up. It is when we do not have spiritual revelation of purpose or destiny that we have to resort to carnal preoccupation with self-preservation and manipulation. When God's will is at stake, no man can stand to resist you. Nigeria is a testimony that the curse of Babel has finally been broken. It is proof that the black man can stand on his own feet and aspire for greatness. We are a validation that we have a place in the plan of God in the end times. You see, Nimrod, a descendant of Cush, ruled the world, led the people into rebellion against God, and the center of his kingdom was Babel. Cush is black. Nimrod was a black man. They began to build what God had not designed. The bulk of the impact of divine judgment always falls upon the leader. Hence, the black man has suffered the most under the yoke of the curse at Babel and that you produce polarization of speech, polarization of point of view, and demographic distribution and incompatibility. That's what has kept us underdeveloped for so long. You see, Nigeria is the enigma of the African continent. Folks, if black people on this planet have a hope or a future, it will be demonstrated here. This is ground zero. Are you listening to me? This is ground zero for all of us that share this color. This is ground zero. Now when we were named, they named us ground zero. You see, Nigeria is the this enigma is of the African continent. We have survived as one. In spite of our problems, we have survived as one. In spite of the fact that those that amalgamated us in the first place were the first who supported our disintegration during the Civil War, yet we have survived as one. In spite of the complexity of our cultural differences, yet we have survived as one. In spite of the mismanagement of our resources, we have survived as one. In spite of the looting and the corruption, we have survived as one. <laughs> In spite of Nadeko, Mossop, militants, and kleptomaniacs, we have survived as one. In spite of the crisis of June 12, we have survived as one. In spite of Metasene, Boko Haram, Zakibia, Crusaders, and Jihadists, we have survived as one. In spite of complex religious conflicts and ethnic violence, we have survived as one. We will not only survive, we will thrive. In the name of Jesus, the only thing that we may not survive is a lack of vision. We need a Nehemiah order of leadership. We need a leadership of vision, willing to sacrifice and to endure. The problem is that of vision, counsel, clarity, and communication. We are at the threshold of something. There is a national reformation that is about to take place. Nigeria is about to shake herself free from the mess that we are in and get back into shape to run the race that God has set for us. I read from Nehemiah. Did you know that every single thing that was used to rebuild Jerusalem and Israel was already there before Nehemiah came. Nothing was important. The only change was the leadership. The only thing that was new was the introduction of Nehemiah. The only thing that was not there before was the introduction of Nehemiah. You are the only thing needed for change to happen. Part of creation Direct or no focus. 
thank you for watching this broadcast we pray that it will have the same profound and lasting impact on you that it had upon us while researching and making it you can order the full-length version of this exciting production arise nigeria by sending an email to info at the capital assembly.org you can also send a text to 080-3311-6696 or you could simply log on to www.thecapitalassembly.org We also want to specially thank our sponsors for making this broadcast possible in your area. Arise Nigerians, it is our time to arrive.